and welcome to Mental Health Mondays. I am Carrie Vescalonis, founder and CEO of Reset Brain and Body, an integrative mental health care practice located in and around Metro Detroit. So this week we are talking about how to deal with a stubborn child. I know you all have been there. Uh, that's probably why you're viewing this video. The child that just completely makes you lose your mind. The child that makes you yell and scream and maybe even slam that cup of coffee down so much that you it spills everywhere and, and you end up really regretting how you responded. And then it makes you feel even worse. <laughs> and then your kid's crying and it's a whole uh, catastrophe. So I'm going to offer you some perspective and some things that you can do to change, hopefully, how things are going at your home. And I also want to start out this discussion with just letting you know that here at Reset, we work a lot with the prevention side of mental health care. So if you have a kiddo in your home that you seem to be struggling with, we actually offer a service called the Family Reset where we come into your home or you can come into your office and we work with your kiddo who is under the age of 10 on things like emotional regulation, social emotional learning, coping skills, getting to understand their emotions in general, their thoughts, their reactions, and help the entire family learn how to better respond. And with this, we offer an entire parenting module kit where the parents work alongside their kids to learn the same types of tools and allow for the parents to dig into the why. Because here's the thing about behavior management. Behavior management with kids is just treating the symptoms. Now, I know that we all love sticker charts and you know incentives and positive reinforcement, and that's great and it's helpful, and I just employed a sticker chart with my four-year-old this morning. But we won't want to have to be incentivizing our 25-year-old to call us just to check in. We don't want to have to bribe our 30-year-old. We have to understand the whys. We have to get to the root causes. It's important so that we don't continue to repeat bad behaviors and create habits that then manifest into more of a personality trait or manifest into things like anxiety, depression, or more serious implications for your family. So right now you're dealing with a stubborn kid. Let's just talk about that. But if you're interested in digging a little bit deeper, for getting more resources and support, please reach out to us and ask about the family reset. Okay, so the first thing to understand about having a stubborn kid is to ask yourself why. Simple causes, simple brain development, right? Regardless of what age your child is at, their brain is not fully developed. We know that our brains don't even begin to look like a fully developed brain until we're at least 25 years old. So that's a lot of time when our children are struggling with just creating the connections that allow them to think with good judgment, to think rationally, to actually think at all before that they're reacting and behaving in a certain way. So recognizing that if you have a kid who's under the age of eight, the majority of their behaviors are fueled by emotion. And that emotion is fueled by instinct and trying to get their needs met. Think about when your child is a baby, they need to cry and act out in order to get their basic needs met. That behavior continues and it continues until they're about seven or eight years old when they start to be able to s develop some of their prefrontal cortex, that part of their brain that allows them to understand, oh, okay, cause and effect. And there's judgment, there's control that I can have over my body, over my thoughts how I can deliver a message when I am really impassioned about something. So giving your kid a little bit of credit, recognizing that a three, four, five, or six year old does not have the developmental capacity to calm down in the moment or to be completely regulated, especially if they're under stress or they're again, really impassioned about wanting or needing something in that moment. So the second thing is that our children inherently have a lack of control over their lives, right? We tell them when to go to bed, usually what to wear, simply just because we're the ones buying their clothing. We tell them what kind of foods that they can eat, when they can eat. We tell them what snacks they can have and when they can have those snacks. We tell them where they're gonna go, when they're going. They have very little control. And 
that can feel really jarring to a kid, especially a kid who likes to have control over their own body and has their own desires. So that is another cause of why a kid might be behaving with more stubborn tendencies. And then the third point to remember, and this is really important, and I want you to consider this because it's a little bit of a rogue philosophy, but hey, that's what we're here for, is that as a society, we tend to stigmatize a stubborn kid. We think of a stubborn kid as being disobedient, obstinate, a bad kid. But those same qualities in an adult are revered. Oh, that person is so disciplined, they're tenacious, they have so much willpower, they're motivated, they're determined. At some point, we saw those qualities in a child as bad, and the same qualities in an adult as something to celebrate. So think about that, and why then we get so angry about an impassioned child, a child who wants things done the way they want things done, to see something through to the finish line, and what needs they might have. So, this is the second part of this whole thing. Your child, your stubborn child, has needs that they have to get met. If you have a less stubborn child, perhaps the needs of that child are to make other people happy, to uh, get more affection, to get more approval from other people, to have less flair in their self-expression, to have less control of their environment. They have different needs. If you have a stubborn child, what are their needs? Are there needs to take up a lot of space and energy in a room? Are there needs to be able to focus on something and finish it through? Are there needs to be able to have just bigger self-expression in general. These needs don't have to be bad because your child doesn't want to please you all the time doesn't mean that they're a bad child. It just means that they have different ways of expressing themselves. So what do we do with all of this? First, dear mom and dad, we have to calm down. Number one, every parent we have to try and be more calm and conscious as a parent, to be non-reactive, because when we are in a non-reactive state, we can see things clearly. When we ourselves are acting from that reactive, stressed out space, we too lose the ability to use our executive functioning to think clearly and use rational thought. We too operate out of our emotional brain. So that's why we meet fire with fire. Our kids yelling, we yell back in return. We get so angry when our stubborn child is being so stubborn. So the second thing is to tactically just give choices. All right, my child is looking for more control in this situation. How can I give choices? We learn this pretty early on with our two and three year olds. You wanna wear a red shirt or green shirt today? Do you want a waffle or a pancake for breakfast today? Do you wanna go to the park on this street or the park on this street today? choices that are easy for you to give. Allow them to feel a sense of control. Ones that aren't a huge sacrifice to safety or to your ability to feel still like the boss of the household because you still are the boss of the household. Always remember that. It is still your rules. And then of course still being firm when necessary and explain why. Even when your child is three or four years old, you can start to explain why just out of habit, even if they're not really fully able to comprehend. A book that I love reading to my son are the Diggory Do How to Train Your Dragon books. These help teach lessons like consequences and lying and attitude. And it's a really great opportunity to create that time to just have lessons learned and talk about big words and what they mean. So when you're able to hold firm, and set those necessary limits and explain why, then your child will solely start to develop the habits of understanding the consequences and why they need to listen to you when they're listening to you. Now again, this isn't always gonna happen in the moment. If you're able to call out, hey, I can understand that you're really frustrated by this. I can understand that this might be hard for you. I can understand that you don't wanna be interrupted right now, or it's hard for me to for you to be told what to do right now because you're excited about X, Y, or Z. 
you're also approaching the limits and the discipline with empathy. Your child is able to be seen. Your child is able to be heard. Think about how that feels as an adult when someone says, gosh, yeah, I can understand why that's upsetting for you. Even though it might be totally driving you nuts, being patient and understanding with your child goes a very long way. And you're also helping them to connect, oh yeah, this is why I'm reacting this way. This is why I'm having such a volatile response. Yeah, I am mad. I am angry. I am feeling rushed. I am feeling like this is unfair. Give them the tools to start to name and label their emotions so that they can start connecting the dots for themselves. But you're still disciplining. You're still telling them, okay, cool. Glad you feel that way, but this is still what's happening. And this is why it has to happen. And all of those things, that whole conversation, mama, that requires you to be calm. It requires you to be conscious. It requires you to be able to see your child as just a human who has needs that, be, that are being met. It requires you to slow down enough to recognize that if you're five minutes late to swimming class, it's okay because you didn't have to go through the shame cycle of losing your cool on your kid. Taking the time to understand your child and to show up with empathy and understanding, to listen and to understand them and their unique selves and what their needs are is vitally important to be patient and compassionate towards them because it's the same compassion we want to offer to ourselves. The same non-judgment that we want to offer to ourselves in our weak moments. But it starts with looking at what is the definition of stubborn? What does this mean about your child? Does it mean that your kid's bad? Or do they just have really strong-willed tendencies? And is that something to be celebrated yet harnessed? I'm here with you. I get it. I have a very, very strong-willed child and another one who was right behind him. And sometimes it's terrifying to think about, oh gosh, these children are um, very overwhelming, but there are ways forward and we can help. You got this.